everybody. Well, you know, sometimes we have quite a bit of scraps in the soap room. We clean our crocs out, we scrape them out, and we have soap left over. We maybe scrape or clean our molds, our paper, or whatever you line the molds with, or your silicone molds. And then there's the trimmings from the sides and whatnot. And I save all of that. I, I let my crock pots sort of dry with the with the lid on so it don't get really super, super hard. And then I scrape it out and put it in a big pot. And um, once every so enough, every, once every now and then, I uh, melt it all up and make more soap. And I've done all kinds of different things with it, but now this time I've been using a lot of activated charcoal. I really like activated charcoal. This is the messy drawer, guys. I don't know if y'all can see in there, but black plumes. See, look, black plumes of activated charcoal. See how much I love activated charcoal? But this is the one. Oh, see, it's it's like this. It's 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 very um, up close and personal activated charcoal. <laughs> anyway, so I buy food grade activated charcoal powder from Butler Creek National Naturals is the brand, and I get it from the Wildwood. Uh, health food retreat or health retreat store and um, and um, <laughs> and so I had a lot of scraps this time that had activated charcoal in it so you might not want to put your activated charcoal scraps in your soap I think I won't next time but in any case this color may come out really pretty in the end but right now, this is what it looks like. It's sort of a natural earthy green gray color. And this is what we're going to make. And see all the chunks in there? That's because we're not going to we're not going to melt them all the way. And I find that really fun to do. And we're using our Essential Depot molds. Um, the wonderful um, silicone molds today. See the fun soaps? I thought the kids would really get a kick out of all the shapes and, and stuff like that. So, and and I had I had a 25 pound lard, you know, empty lard bucket full of scraps that I had been saving just for Tracy's kids. And, um, and so now we've got to let them cure and get them all shipped to her. And then her family's going to come get them and, and take them back with them to the mission. And here's two that I haven't cut yet. Um, but I wanted to show you how to make it. Battery died, but I did get to wash my hands. <laughs> okay, so I really wanted to show you how to make it, how to rebatch your scraps. Now, you can use a stick blender at the end and beat up all those little pieces and grade your soap with a, you know, with a cheese grater or in a food processor and get it much smaller than what I'm putting in here. Matter of fact, this is my laundry detergent grades. Uh, that I've grated up um, uh, with, the, with the food processor in the cheese gravy thing. And, um, and you can make uh, just a soap with no spots, okay? But today we're going to make soap with spots. So, I hope you like it. Okay, everybody. This is my monster tur turkey roaster that you can sometimes find at Walmart around here for $29.99 and I'm putting four cups of water and I preheated that thing in there and then I'm putting all of my scraps and this is a 25 pound lard bucket and I don't quite have it all the way to the rim And there we go. Scraps are afoot. Let me get you closer. I've got a light pointed from the top because this is the dark corner of my soap room. And uh, I'm going to break these up just a little bit as I find them. Um, but I'm not going to like go too crazy with you know getting all of it perfectly small because we want lots of chunks in here that don't get all the way melted for the way I like this soap to look 
and this is all the scraps of my soap except for the woman's bar for what Bridget uh, you think two months yeah about two months mm -hmm. ever since May yeah about two months and um, I don't get to help much anymore. This will be the first time I've got to help in a while. Oh, didn't I get you to help me just a little bit ago? Mm, maybe, but it wasn't on camera. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, because the kids are at an age right now where where they really uh, require a lot of your attention. Mm hmm And uh, so uh, having an employee is awesome. Mm-hmm. Being able to afford an employee is awesomer. <laughs> yeah. That bar is so big. I don't We're know. Gonna to, uh, well, no, it broke up. It's, it's about to confiscate that. <laughs> it's that immune system bar. All right, hang on just a second. Tell them. Uh, we'll go see if you can take a message. Sorry, I had a phone call come in. And there we go. Now I'm going to keep poking around in here. And uh, if I pull up any like monster chunks like this, this is where we've scraped the bottom of Crocs. Um, I don't believe in wasting. And so I'm going to just keep uh, doing this. And I've got this thing on high right now. But uh, I'm going to keep working. Uh, these pieces and breaking them up into chunks and uh, now I take that back some of my scraps goes in the lotion bar Bridget that's true that's true so there's a few scraps that's not in here okay so we're gonna melt this down and make something fun for the kiddos um, at um, that's going to the orphan, I mean, that's going, I think it's an orphanage overseas for Tracy. And we're all donating soap to, for, for the kiddos. And so I've been saving my scraps uh, to make fun soaps for the kids. So, all right. Do we get to make some Phineas and Ferb molded soaps? I don't know. I, I, that's a thought. All right, bye, everybody. We'll bring you right back. Okay, I got us some better light hooked up. And um, this is uh, after uh, about 30 minutes, and I'm just, uh, every now and then I'm just stirring it. Ooh, it's hot down there in the bottom. And as the big piece is coming up, uh, I'm breaking them, and of course I could have done that ahead of time. But as they get soft, I'll be able to just punch through them with a the spoon. And uh, I've got a lot of activated charcoal in this soap this time. So we'll just have to see where that goes. What colors we get. But it's just real important to keep things stirred up. And add water as needed. Okay. We'll just keep her mounting. Okay, everybody. I've added another two cups of water. And I've been, I had this on high for a while. And now I've uh, turned it, I turned it down on medium of after about 30 minutes. And I didn't tell you, and I'm sorry. And uh, I just poured the water on top so that it uh, it would uh, soften the soap on top as it heated and so anyway uh, so this is the scraps and you can see the activated charcoal is having itself a party in here and so there's no telling what color this soap's going to be and I'm trying to just get the uh, the water blended but I think my table's slightly out of kilter 
and it's causing it to be dry over here and all wet over here. So I'm fixing to find something to poke underneath the legs of it and tilt it just a little bit the other way. But this cooker is doing a really good job, I think. And uh, it's been about two and a half hours. And I hadn't messed with it too much. Just about every 30 minutes I've been coming up here and, and, and stirring it. So I'll keep you posted. Okay, everybody, we got soup. Look at that. There's a big piece. I'm going to chunk it up. There's a, that was a soap ball there. I'm just smearing it around. There's a big piece. I'm going to break that up. And it's been on for about another, what, 45 minutes since I did it last? Woo! It's hot, too. And there's a soap ball. Break that up. So now we've put six cups of water in here so far. And we are cooking with gas. This is doing good. I need a, I need a spatula. I'm going to scrape down my sides. Let's see, it's totally sticking to the sides of this big old cooker. Well, I hadn't been scraping my sides down or it wouldn't have got that bad. Don't this look good? Now, technically, it's moldable right now, and these big chunks would just be fun, but I'm going to heat it up just a little bit more and break some of these big chunks up just a little bit more. And because I like that chunky look, you know, to have all those, have all those, uh, look, uh, have that weird uh, chunky look about it and these pieces are breaking up really good with my spatula and if it gets too dry I'm just gonna put some more water in it because it don't matter how long it takes to cure uh, just putting more water in it that's all it's gonna do is make it cure too long I mean we know we don't want to make it like water I mean t you know too thin or nothing but if it needs it, we'll just put some more water in it. All right, I'll keep you posted. Okay, everybody. It is nice and melted. We've still got a few chunks, but I want that. And so uh, I'm turning it off now and letting it cool down a little bit. And then, like, we see that big old piece right there? But that'll cut, I mean, I'll get the thing a hold of it and break them up a little bit. But basically those chunks will make pretty, pretty pieces of, pretty chunky pieces in the soap. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, I've turned the crock pot off, but I'm going to put the lid back on it and let it cool for a while. And it's been cooking about four and a half hours, I'd say. Um, and we've had six cups of water put in it. But now we're going to put our lid on it and the crock, and it's off, and we're going to let it cool a while, and then we'll decide if we want to put some more essential oil in it or if we like it just the way it is from all the combinations of the scents of the soaps already in there. Okay. Let's see what we got going here. It's been cooling for what, about 30 minutes, wouldn't you say, Meg? Yeah. Because we went and had spaghetti. Philip made spaghetti. It was awesome. And we've turned a real a real unusual green, I think. Which is quite weird. I wasn't expecting green.
So now we'll see how cool we are or how hot we are. Got to be sure not to get it in the bottom. And we'll just sort of twizzle it around the whole area. Let's see. Okay, it says we're right at 160, so we can put more essential oils in there now if we want to. So let me give it a sniff, everybody. It has a really good scent all on its own. Um, but it is a little weak. Um, let me turn off this camera and think about what I want to put in there. Okay, I decided to go with some wintergreen and some lemon. So one, two to start because I already had a pretty good minty smell from the soaps that was already in there, so that's why I thought. And then I'm going to put some lemon. One, two, three, four. And we'll give that a good stirring. And, and see what we got. And you see the shininess? We gotta make sure we stir it till all the shininess is gone. Uh, because that if it's if it's still got that shiny glint, then that means that the essential oils have not been absorbed into the soap and they're still floating around, and then it'll start sweating essential oil. Alright, now see now we've got that nice opaque flavor. Opaque flavor, opaque smell again. You know, where it's all, well, there's a little bit that looks like it still needs it. Ooh, that smells nice. <clears throat> um, I, I'm just doing a hint of scent, so that should be good. Now, we're using our Essential Depot molds. Aren't those awesome? They're so thick and durable and heavy, and they can be used in a uh, hot process, cold process. I'm told they can also be used in the oven for CPO something or another. It's that oven method. I don't never do it. And so let's, uh, I don't know how many moles this is going to take. So we'll just put this in here. and see how much it takes. Hey Meg, can you reach our boxes that are up there and grab me one? All right, let me bring you back. I think there's a fingerprint on the screen. Sorry guys. All right. And then I'm going to clean down the sides and I'm going to take my TEA spoon and just do a cute little swirl on the top just for fun. I dug up some of my big pieces so right there so I push them back down.
don't know. Just doesn't seem like it's wanting to be with me on this one here. Since I got plenty of stuff left over. Now, there we go. There's our first one. Need another box, Meg. Oh, I see. She poked them behind me. Now, y'all will just love these Essential Depot molds. These things are going to last you for years and years and years and years and years and years. You know, when, when they do something in Essential Depot, they do it right. They don't never mess around. And uh, <clears throat> they wanted these things to be hard-wearing and the best molds in town and I believe they succeeded now I don't, I don't think I have enough soap in here I think I need to put just a little bit more to get it up to the same level as the other one There's a big chunk. That's going to be so pretty when we cut it. All right, here you go, Meg. Keep it level, Meg. Look. That one still had the flaps in it. Let's count our scoops. I do believe five scoops with that big old thing did the trick. Pushing them big pieces down in there. I just need a little bit more soap. I'm an eyeballer. And that just looks like it needs to be... Well, I'm going to push those pieces down in there. There we go. And you see how liquefied this is. And that's because we put so much water in there, six cups of water and, um, and everything. So this soap will take a little bit more to coat, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, cure because of that. But it's going to be so awesome. I call this Heinz 57 soap. Everything but the kitchen sink. It's recycling at its best in the soap run. All right, man, here's another one.
I'm using the box that came with my Essential Depot kit uh, as a stabilizing frame. Oh, didn't that one do pretty? All right, Meg. Here's another one. See, if any of them looks like it doesn't have as much as the other ones, if there's one that looks a little short, because I've just got a couple of scoops left in this. The first one. The first one that looks like it's not as tall as the others. Let's see if it could handle just a little bit more. When you figure, when you're doing this, you know, from scratch, you can figure your batch size. But when you're doing this from uh, with a rebatch, you never know how much soap you're really going to get. And because of the fact that we uh, twist, 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 twist. Anyway, because we're rebatching, we put that water in there. It's very movable, and so that makes it very easy. To, uh, to add a little bit more as long as you don't let it get too cold. All right. We'll do, give it the jiggle. Okay, isn't that pretty, guys? Okay. There she is, all empty. All right, I'll bring you back tomorrow and we'll cut that soap and fix her up for Tracy and her uh, orphans, I believe. You never know. I could be wrong. Hey, everybody. Okay. It's the next day. And, um, I'm not too sure about the color of these soaps. I think keeping the activated charcoal scraps might have been a bad choice. <laughs> so, um, we've got a really unusual color. Um, I wouldn't call it green and I wouldn't call it gray. I'm not too sure what to call that. <laughs> but anyway, let's get these things out of here and see what we got. So, up. Oh, and we're using our Essential Depot molds today. They are so awesome. I love them, by the way. Okay, so now let's just give it a little dump. And I put these in hot. Yeah, I put these in hot because I didn't have to... Well, no, I, no, I, I did cool them down. Um, I just didn't pull enough. So, there we go. <clears throat> there it comes. Ta-da! I'm going to just put the scraps back in there and we'll let Meg clean these. Alright, but they're so easy to clean, you just put them in hot water and ta-da, and now these soaps are going to be soft, very similar to cold process soap, 
where you have to be really, really, really careful with it because I put so much water in there. But that's because I didn't want to wait forever because I'm impatient. And I could have put less water in there and then I wouldn't have had to cure it as long, but it would have took a lot longer to melt it. And you know me and patience. And I got my Essential Depot, expe uh, what do you call it? It's the tester model. The, the official model will be on the website soon. And let's see. And as I said, because I put all this water in here, we're going to have to be careful with them. Oh, they're so pretty with the little spots in there, though. And you just take and, and take your finger along the edges, and you got perfection. Total and complete perfection. Oh, and they are very gentle. I mean, soft like... Um, um, you would expect to find with cold process soap and a very unusual color and when I saw that the the black was doing the activated charcoal was what it was doing in my scraps you know then I knew I felt like if I put anything else in there I would just make it worse and maybe when this cures, it'll be lighter and much more attractive. But look at the pretty paint, the pretty spots in there. Isn't that pretty? I'm in love with that. <laughs> so let's get these boogers out here. And uh, I think because of how soft they are, I'm actually going to wait a while and come back and, and do the edges. But I think the kids will just love uh, this. Tracy's, I believe it's Tracy's mother. I know it's a relative. You know, I should keep, I should get all this stuff fresh in my mind, but I'm just ditzy. And see, remember that big piece, you know? Isn't that pretty? And um, you, we could have took this out sooner and had more chunks, but I wanted to melt it up pretty good. And oh, isn't that pretty? It looks like a it looks like a little man. The kids will have fun deciding what the shapes are. So anyway, Tracy's family is coming back from uh, coming over here from the mission, and we're gonna send some uh, soaps. Oh, and it smells good. Very light. I was afraid, you know, the kids wouldn't like something really strong. And I thought that kids would like minty smelling things. So that's why we went with, I went with the wintergreen. And let's get out another one. And I love using the box for the stabilizer. And uh, that came with the, that your kit was shipped in. Even if you get, I think even if you get, a, a, a bunch of other stuff because I've got several kits at one time and each kit was in a box so uh, and we on purposely planned it I don't know who it was that had the idea but I know I complained that we needed a stabilizing frame and so amongst the soapers that did the kit or somebody at Essential Depot was so smart and said, well, use the box. And so I do. Oh, it's because it's so soft. Just run my finger down there. Now, there we go. It's what you might call a little wet and sticky. Because I added so much water to it. This will take a good while to cure. But we got plenty of time uh, before the kids 
um, before they're coming over and taking the soaps with them. So, we got time. We got time for them to cure. And I think these will probably take about two weeks to properly cure because I put so much water in there. And see how easy they cut? Ooh, isn't that pretty? And I love the smell. It's very mild, and I thought that would be good for the kiddos. I don't know what age is. I don't know if they're all real young kids or if there's some older kids. Oh, and here, y'all can see this. That one there was filled really close to the top, and that is filled more like three-quarters. And this one here was filled really close to the top, so you can see, you know, the difference in height. This is that last one that I said, Meg, I've got some extra. And I should have had her bring me all of them. And normally I'd have had them all sitting right there, but I was doing all that vegan soap. So I had I had my, my counter so full of stuff. And uh, I still got vegan soap everywhere. Uh, all of it's usable. And I had some comments today, and oh, that one's cute. Look at that one. <laughs> I love that one. I had, um, I had some um, comments today about the recipe and why did I make it so hard. And that's because I like my, um, I like my soaps to have a really hard bar. And when you run the recipe through, uh, you're not calculating for adding the super fats because those go in later. Um, well, for those of you who don't know how I, I make soap, I do a zero fat recipe. I mean, a zero super fat recipe. So everything in the base is turned 100% into soap. And then 30 minutes before the soap is finished cooking, I add the super fats, the shea butter, olive oil, egg, uh, cocoa butter, coconut oil, vitamin E, glycerin, okay? So... So when you're when I'm calculating the base recipe, it's telling me how hard that base recipe is, but I have to remember that I'm adding moisturizing and creamy and softening agents to it at the end. So that brings the level down on the stats when you're doing it on the soap cow. Uh, I think that's soapcow.net. It might be soapcow.com. So I like a really hard bar so that when I go back and add the super fats at the end, it balances out to a perfect bar. Um, and so I'm going to continue cutting these beautiful rebatchers. Aren't those adorable? I would say that that was the equivalent of a 32 ounce recipe. And this was a, a equivalent of like a 36 or 37 right here about how full they are. There you go. Okay. So anyway, so I'm going to keep cutting and get Tracy's soap starting to cure for her kiddos. And uh, I so hope you've enjoyed this video. And what I was talking about was comments on my Facebook chat page. I would love it if you came. Uh, we help each other. We have fun. And we give, bring new ideas to the plate that you've never thought about. I know that m I have grown from the input and the posts of the fellow soapers on my Facebook soap chatting page. So if you make soap or any other beauty product from scratch, we would love to have you come. So please come and visit us. It's, well, you know, it's like www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash essential soap. I think it might be soaps, but it's at the beginning and the end of the video. So all you got to do is just look at that. Plus it's on my about page and it's going to be in the description of the video. And if you uh, would like to purchase, oh, let me show you. This is my Essential Depot soap kit and it comes with this beautiful mold from Essential Depot that is very thick plastic and it comes with those base oils I was telling you about and it but with the perfect recipe. 
and it comes with all the lye that you need to make the soap and it comes uh, oh and this is part of the base recipe these two here go together in the crock pot and then they get turned 100 percent into soap by the lye and then there is these awesome super fats i was telling you about that makes it creamy and awesome and you have my special spirit lifter blend of essential oils and a color up packet but then i did 13 videos on how you could do this um different ways including making coconut milk soap soy milk soap uh, goat's milk soap buttermilk soap any kind of milk um rice milk soap um so the first there's 13 videos and the first one is like how to do different things in just regular soap mold swirls uh you know uh pot swirls uh and then i do videos on how to make uh how to make milk soap with this same kit and it's all in the crock pot. Oh, you do have to buy a crock pot. Anyway, so, and you get this beautiful mold that you can just use over and over. And it comes, it comes with the box, guys. Okay, and my YouTube channel is right here on the box. Um, but on the sale page, you'll see the link to the videos. And you can watch the videos ahead of time and see if my kit is the right one for you. Because there's other kits there too. Plus, you can just buy the mold. And, um... I'm an affiliate of Essential Depot, <laughs> and I do have a link, and so it will be in the description of this video. It's on my the first post on the Facebook chat page, and uh, I have it on my About page. Uh, if you go to the main channel and click on About, uh, there's like four tabs, I think, there under my pictures, uh, under the picture, but above the videos. And uh, I would just love it if you use my link. It really helps me out. Thank you very much. If I've taught you anything and you want to help me out. So anyway, let me cover it back up. I'm keeping this one really nice so that I can show it to y'all guys because I'm so proud of it and, uh, and all that good stuff. Oh, I forgot to lay the thing down. I'll have to set that up there later. Oh, yeah, see? Here's the box. And it comes with the little tabs, and you just cut those off, you know, so that you've got... And you can make it a little shorter if you want to. All right. Okay, well, Tracy, I hope your kiddos love the sopos, even if they did come out sort of a funky color. But you never know. When it cures, it may look like some classy color that everybody wants to know how to make. Mm, you never know. <laughs> Bye, everybody.